Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. For this how-to video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use a garage air compressor for airbrushing. All right, now, this is mainly for people who are thinking about getting into airbrushing and don't wanna go dump a whole bunch of money into a brand new airbrush and also a brand new compressor. And you might have a garage air compressor laying around. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys uh, what you're gonna need and how exactly to hook up your garage air compressor to your airbrush all right so let's go ahead and get into it all right first piece of equipment you're going to need is a compressor obviously uh, me i have a craftsman's pancake air compressor six gallon at 150 psi now obviously the max psi read doesn't matter unless you're trying to blow a hole through whatever you're trying to airbrush you're definitely not going to use all of that all right so the next thing you're going to need is an airbrush adapter set this particular one that I have is a seven piece, which comes with one fourth and one eighth connectors. This one is made by Hubist or Hubist, H-U-B-E-S-T, and I order, ordered it off Amazon for, I think about seven, seven to $10 or somewhere in that uh, ballpark, okay? Um, so you're definitely gonna need these, so go ahead and pick you up a set of these. Next thing you're gonna need is a air compressor adapter set. Okay, this particular one right here is a 19 piece air hose coupler and plug kit that comes with one fourth connectors. All right, and this set also comes with a Teflon tape that you're gonna need. Okay, as you can see, it comes with all the connectors, comes with male end, female end, um, it's 19 pieces, like I said, also comes with a Teflon tape. All right, now, all these settings or all these fittings you might already have, so you might not need to order any, Okay, or you might know the exact ones that you need and you can just hit the Home Depot or Lowe's and get those exact ones. But to save yourself the heartache of having to go back and forth to the store, trying to figure out which ones you need or whatever the case is, you can just go ahead and order you a set off Amazon that basically comes with almost every fitting that you should need. Next thing you're going to need is a air filter regulator. Okay, now you're going to need this to help keep the moisture out of your airlines when you're airbrushing. All right, this one right here, I picked up at Lowe's for like $30. You can order these off Amazon, anywhere from $10 to $7. All depends on the quality that you're looking for. All right, but you will definitely need these to keep the uh, moisture or to help keep the moisture out of your airlines. All right, so the next thing is the hose that actually comes with the air compressor. Now, this is actually optional. You don't really need this, um, but I use it to try to keep the air compressor as far as away from my airbrush booth as possible. Okay? All right, next thing, of course, you're definitely going to need is the hose for the airbrush. And then you're going to need your airbrush. Me, I have the Iwata Eclipse that I use, and the Iwata Eclipse also comes with its own little air pressure regulator or air filter. All right, so go ahead and show you how to hook these up. Getting right into it. This right here is basically the setup. I laid it out for you guys. Okay, so you have the air compressor. Then you have your female connection right here that goes to the air compressor. That goes into your air filter regulator. Okay, now some air filter regulators are in line, so they will be turned like this. And you connect it from there and there. Oh, oh wait a minute. But this, but this particular one, does not set up like that, it's set up like this. All right, so you have your female connection right there. All right, then you have your male coupler connection that goes right here and then goes into the air, the, uh, air compressor line, okay? Followed by another female connection, right? That goes into the air compressor line. And then you have your airbrush connection right here, okay? And then that right there goes into the airbrush hose, which then goes into the uh, air filter regulator that actually comes with, like I said, the Wadi Eclipse that goes into the airbrush. Okay, now, like I told you before, this hose right here is optional, so you don't need this if you do not want to use it. You can actually take this out of the equation, okay, all together, and then just connect that to that. And then bring this over here, and boom that is now your connection okay so it's pretty simple i'm gonna go ahead and connect it for you guys all right when it's all said and done this is basically how it's going to look 
okay now remember this teflon tape is very very important i actually did not want to take uh, my connection apart because i had no leaks at all and of course i was afraid that if i took it apart that i might end up with some leaks once i put it back together but like i said the teflon tape very important because that's going to stop air from leaking out um through your connections okay have a connection right there and then you have your airbrush all right so that's pretty much it now of course some air compressors are different some air compressors do not have the connections off the side like this they might be flush on the air compressor so if you have an air compressor an air compressor i keep saying air compressor so many times if you have an air compressor like that you might want to think about getting a, an extension pole that actually comes off so you can have this off the side of your air compressor all right now for some of the drawbacks of using a garage uh, air compressor for airbrushing all right it's pretty loud and everyone knows that and this is the main one so if your workspace is inside the house abort mission don't do it because you're gonna piss your wife off you're gonna wake the baby up and you're gonna wake the dog up all right so i would definitely not recommend it if your workspace is inside your house um, if you live in an apartment same thing and your workspace is in your apartment definitely don't do it you might get all types of complaints um and you might get your landlord called on you so don't do it all right now if your workspace is outside the house in your garage in a workshop it's definitely not that bad um because the noise shouldn't be an issue like for me like i said my workspace is inside the garage so the noise is not an issue at all okay two Everyone knows when, it, when a compressor fills up to capacity, it cuts off, okay? And then when it drops below a certain capacity, it cuts back on. With that being said, there's been plenty of times I've been airbrushing and totally forgot about the airbrush or the, the uh, compressor, and it cuts on out of nowhere and scares the living shit out of me, okay? It took me, at least, took me at least two to three weeks to actually get used to it cutting on and not, you know what I'm saying, startling me, okay? So once you get past that point, it's not that bad, but the first couple of times it's going to cut on and it's going to scare the hell out of you. Okay. Um, other than that, I don't have any issues out of the air compressor. Um, in the future, I definitely still plan on getting a, uh, airbrush, a airbrush air compressor strictly dedicated to airbrushing because I plan on moving my workspace into the house, like I said, sometime to the future. So I'm definitely still planning on doing that. But for now, my garage air compressor works perfectly. Um, it gets the job done um, and I have no issues out of it. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you found any helpful information in this video, make sure you hit that like button. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel, okay? Hit that bell icon because I got tons of new videos coming in the future and I have a lot more content coming. So thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video.